So it came, it came to me today, um, Hawkins, uh, you know, Hawk, Hawkins, who reached uh, one of the highest levels of enlightenment, advanced spiritual seeker, and he talked about when you're getting to the highest levels of consciousness, um, and uh, you can do muscle testing. So, Buddha, you know, he was getting like, as he was going to these very advanced levels of enlightenment, it was like all his bones were crushing and there was absolutely agonizing pain in his body. And he was off in, uh, where was he? Korea. And I think they have like something like a Buddhist Bible type thing in there. And, uh, and, and it was the story of Buddha, and he was talking about his bones crushing as well. Uh, uh, and then uh, he did muscle testing on Jesus. And in the Bible, it talks about the gar Garden of Gethsemane, where he sweat blood and tears. And that was the time when Jesus was also going through this huge physical agony. And uh, when you get to the very advanced levels of enlightenment, it's like the nervous system, the physical body, is uh, releasing so much global karma that it's like the weight of the world is crushing you. I don't know if that makes sense. You're taking on so much negativity and, and it's being transformed into light that there's actually physical agony and pain. Feel the feeling of like the bones crushing. And what came to me was like these people who, uh, you know, the avatars and the mystics and the enlightened teachers who get to very advanced levels. Now, even if you got to the first level of enlightenment, you wouldn't get to, to the bone crushing stage. This is the, really the end stages of enlightenment. Or if you're a saint, you wouldn't get to that level. But you're taking on so much collective karma to clear it that you actually go into physical anger. So I was like sort of praying, praying for potential tenants. And I was yawning, you know, and that's quite pleasant. To yawn is quite pleasant. But actually, when you're going to these are very, if these people are people who are so altruistic in, you know, they give their lives to, for, for the sake of humanity, shall we say, for the clearing of humanity, and taking on all the darkness uh, in the world. It's like they have their, the final stages are like, and it was quite funny, there was a hilarious um, question and answer session with Hawkins, and this woman was saying, like, if I become enlightened, do I have to go through the bone crushing phase? You know, <laughs> and it was like, it was quite, it was quite hilarious. But you don't have to, you see. But that's only if you, um, I believe with Hawkins, he said he had a prior karmic contract that he wanted uh, to, it was a prior, out of consciousness to, to be here, uh, I guess, um, to, uh, to stay in the enlightened state and clear stuff from the collective. Whereas a lot of us will just, uh, just uh, pop out of the body in a good place and not have to come back. You don't have to sort of stick around and try and clear the darkness, but I could just sort of see it, like, I was like, it just sort of came to me this week that, you know, I'm yawning, but actually, like, the enlightened teachers are going through physical agony, uh, because all I'm clearing is, like, some tenants, you know, my negative energy with some tenants is a bit of yawning, but, but uh, the physical agony that they go through for the clearing, so I thought it was like, and I got it, you know, the, um, you know, to, to take out so much darkness from the world, and bring the light to it in the collective clearing. Uh, if you watch Hawkins' videos, he would, um, and I've shared this before, I mean, it came to me, I'm pretty, you know, I might be wrong, but I think, um, you know, he, he would, on one of his videos, he would like sit down like this and radiate out light into the world in his mudra position for all the suffering that's going on. And he was a recovery, he was in 12 steps, so there was obviously light for those who are suffering with addiction. And, uh, and then, you know, when I had my near-death spiritual experience, when I was in active addiction, food addiction, mm -hmm. I had this spiritual experience. The light came in as I was in the total depths of despair. And then someone gave me a DVD of Hawkins. And I had a second spiritual experience. And then I met Hawkins. And then I saw the DVD of Hawkins sending out light into the world. And I, it obviously connected. These people are just sending out so much light to all the lost souls. And they're giving the energy. Um, we will also say this in the 12-step meetings, we hold a, a space of silence for those who are still suffering out there. And that light, I remember an old-timer once saying, in these 12-step meetings for people suffering with alcohol, drugs, or food, or whatever it is, we have, often have a few moments of silence where the whole group 
uh, holds a moment of silence in respect for those who are still suffering. And there was this old timer in her 80s, and she was saying, like, that's, you know, when we all hold that silence, that's when a miracle happens to bring someone into the vicinity of these rooms. The energy is catalyzed and the miracle happens. And something orchestrates those people uh, getting into the light. So, uh, um, so that wasn't to put people off spiritual work, because most people, you know, will, uh, I don't want to put people off. But if you wanted the highest level of enlightenment to stick around, uh, then that would be the bone, bone crushing phase uh, that came to me. Uh, most people won't have to go through the bone crushing phase. You, can, uh, you don't have to go that far. Um, okay.